what's going on? It's Lauren from Hot For Food, and we're cooking again today. We're making something a little special because Thanksgiving is coming up for all of you in the United States of America, and Lucky Me gets to celebrate Thanksgiving twice because I already had Canadian Thanksgiving. Now, if you watched my Snapchat or my Insta story during that time last month, you would have seen me making a little puff pastry Thanksgiving roast beast, I was calling it. There's no meat, it's completely vegan, but I'm gonna call it a Thanksgiving roast or a Thanksgiving pot pie. But basically it's this delicious pie that's got layers of all the Thanksgiving flavors in it. It's got sweet potato mash, a lentil mushroom kind of meaty gravy layer, and an apple cranberry sauce on top, all between luscious layers of puff pastry. And I'm gonna show you how to make it. It's amazing and you can bring it to your feast this year for Thanksgiving. So here's how it's done. So you can start by making the cranberry applesauce, which is all done in one pot, it's super easy. You can also use a pre-made cranberry sauce if you want. So we're gonna add cranberries, applesauce, diced apples, water, sea salt, cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice, and ginger. And just give it a stir and let it simmer. And then while that's cooking, we can boil our sweet potatoes for the sweet potato mash and just cook those until they're tender. So while the potatoes are cooking, your cranberry sauce is reducing, we're gonna start making the other filling, which is really easy. You're just gonna do that in one pan. So we're gonna start by adding some oil to a pan. And then to this, we're gonna add onion, celery, and carrot. So you're gonna cook these for about four minutes. Okay, now we're gonna add the seasoning, which is fresh thyme, but you could use dried, sage, nutmeg, and salt and pepper. Once the onions, celery, and carrots cook down like this, then you're gonna add chopped portobello mushrooms. So once the mushrooms are mostly cooked like this, then add in minced garlic, and cooked lentils. So just saute this for a couple of minutes to get the garlic uh, cooked. Then we're gonna add vegetable stock and let it simmer and reduce. Then we're gonna add a cornstarch slurry, which is just a tablespoon of cornstarch and a tablespoon of water. And this is gonna help thicken it up into a gravy. So once it gets thick and there's no more liquid really in it, you can turn the heat off and you need to let this cool before putting it in the roast. So now you're gonna drain your sweet potatoes and put them back in the pot so we can make the mash. All right, we're gonna add vegan butter, nutritional yeast, cinnamon, we're gonna add garlic powder, we're gonna add allspice, nutmeg, and ginger. You can also add salt and pepper to taste, and we're gonna add a little bit of almond milk. And now just combine this until it's really smooth. And again, you want it to be pretty cooled off before we add it to the puff pastry. So we're using a pre-made puff pastry dough. It's a generic, no-name brand. You can probably find it in the freezer section at your grocery store. You're gonna thaw it overnight so that it's soft and pliable to use. You're also gonna want flour on standby, so flour up your hands, flour up your rolling pin. I got a new rolling pin. I thought this metal one might work better than a wood one and you don't take apart the puff pastry. It's not phyllo dough, it's puff pastry. You want to roll all those layers of vegetable oil and flour together. You don't wanna peel them apart, it doesn't even work. I'm just clarifying, because some people thought you're supposed to take the layers of it off when I made sausage rolls, and you're not. And then we're gonna roll out the dough to about a 17 by 12 inch rectangle. And then we're gonna cut about three quarters of the way down the rectangle, and that's gonna be our inside piece, and the remainder is gonna be the top piece for the puff pastry pot pie, or roast, or whatever you wanna call it. Whatever, there's probably lots of ways to do this. I'm just gonna put a sheet going in like this. I'm not gonna worry about this side. We are gonna lightly grease this just so it doesn't stick. And then you're going to try to layer it, you are going to layer it, in the bread pan very delicately. And you want it to be on all, like covering all sides. So then if you have some excess like this, you just wanna press it in, overlap. It's fine if there's some thicker parts 
And then just a little troubleshooting. If you have a gap like this, just cut some of the excess from the side because you're gonna have excess and just sort of press it onto there. And then just like paste it in the gap, it's fine. And there we go. Now we're ready to fill all the layers in here. So we're gonna do sweet potato mash, then the gravy uh, mushroom lentil layer, and then that cranberry applesauce. So spread the sweet potato all along the bottom. You want a pretty decent layer, probably higher than an inch. Then scoop on the next layer. This is our meaty layer. And then you're gonna add your apple cranberry sauce. So we're gonna take the top piece now and put it on top. And what you wanna do here is kinda just press around the edge like this, just to create a bit of a seal around the filling and the crust. If you have quite a bit of an overhang here, you can just sort of tuck it in and it will seal itself to the rest of the crust. Sort of tuck like this. Anywhere there's excess, you could just fold it over on itself like that. And we've got this big flap. You could cut it or, I mean, it's fine if it's rustic, you just tuck it in and make a little crust like that. And then just to make sure that's all sealed and nice looking, we're gonna take a fork and make some marks all the way around. All right, and then we wanna make little air pockets at the top, so you're just gonna take a sharp knife and make little slits in the top like this, just to let out the steam. And there's our finished roast. So this is going into the oven uh, at 375 for about 30 to 40 minutes. This is gonna get golden on top. You won't really know what's happening inside, but when I baked it last time, it was hot and piping inside and the outsides were cooked and it was all good. Your baking time may vary, so just double check. You can always stick a fork through one of the slits just to see if it's hot in the middle. We have the exact right amounts for all the fillings, except there is a little extra sweet potato, but I swear I did that on purpose so that you could eat it while you're waiting for it to bake. <laughs> Cause you're gonna be starving with all that work. Oh yeah, look at that roast. I'm calling it a roast, I don't know. Now very important, once you get that golden brown thing happening here, do not take it out of the pan yet. Just let it cool, let it settle, because if you take it out too soon, it may just collapse. But we're gonna make it look super cute by tying a little piece of twine and wrapping the parchment around it. There's our Thanksgiving roast. Look at all the layers in there. Now, okay, it may not look the prettiest on the inside, but it's delicious, trust me. It tastes like Thanksgiving. I brought this to Thanksgiving in Canada this year. The lentil mushroom layer has that gravy in there, but you could make our mushroom gravy, which I'll link below, and you could drizzle that on top as well. Crunchy, crunchy, crunchy. Oh yeah, mmm, you got everything. Sweet, savory. You could experiment with different layers in this Thanksgiving roast, Thanksgiving pot pie, if you want. Um, what else could you put in there? You could put seitan sausage, mac and cheese. No, I'm just kidding, don't put mac and cheese in there. <laughs> Might work, I don't know, do what you want. Um, but this is like Thanksgiving in a slice, which I think is really cool. So I hope you try it this year at your Thanksgiving or your Friendsgiving, definitely for Friendsgiving. Um, there's lots here, it'll serve like six people even eight people if you cut the pieces thin enough and you've got other sides. Let me know what you think if you try it. I wanna see your pictures. I wanna see some comments of what your thoughts are. The recipe is linked below on our blog, hotforfoodblog.com, as well as the gravy recipe I mentioned. And happy Thanksgiving to everyone in the US of A. I got to celebrate Thanksgiving twice because I have a food channel, so that's pretty cool. Um, I guess the next big thing is gonna be Christmas coming up soon, so if you have ideas for Christmas recipes, let me know in the comments. Subscribe, we post every Wednesday here on the channel, and I'll see you guys next Wednesday, next week, for more food, more hot for food, more deliciousness. I got a lot of roast to eat, don't I? Bye.